Hey, welcome to CEO Check-In. We have a guest today, Jennifer Spivak is joining us from Team Spivak. She is an expert in Facebook ads marketing and I'm so excited to have her back on. We had Jennifer on a few weeks ago and there was some tech trouble. We had some gremlins who interrupted our show. So uh, Jennifer graciously agreed to come back on and we're excited to have her back. Hey, Rabia. Hey, Maddie. My go big tip for today is build with joy. The go big tip today is build with joy. And that means when you're building a new product or service in your company, try to focus on the joy that you can have while you're building it. As entrepreneurs, we're sometimes very outcome focused. And until we get that first big client or until we sign up five new customers, we kind of beat ourselves up or think this isn't going well or I'm failing somehow. But a lot of times things take longer than you think to build. So it's very important that you access the joy that you have in the building, in the process. This is kind of like, you know, enjoy the journey, right? I'm sure you've heard that expression. So build with joy is a reminder that you, it's up to you to find the joy in what you're doing to advance your company and not wait to have the joy when you have the customers or the $20,000 check because you'll have a whole new set of problems then. You may not have any more joy than you do right now. So I'd really love to encourage you to do that. And especially now during the pandemic when so many people are pivoting, are creating new lives, podcasts, webinars, online courses, um, this is a time when people are in building mode and it's tempting sometimes to just say, hey, why isn't it happening faster? Or why aren't people signing up? And to feel frustrated that budgets have been cut and people are more hesitant about spending their money. That's all the reality that we're facing right now. So what can you do today to amp up the joy that you have in building your business? Maybe it's focusing on the positive feedback that you got from people who did a test drive of your pilot. Maybe it's writing down all your wins, as I recommend everyone does in my program, in a note or in a journal so that you can read them on a regular basis. Maybe it's celebrating with your team when you have your first win, even if it isn't the big win, right? Maybe you got your first client with this new product or service you're building and you go celebrate that. And you can celebrate again when you have 10 or 20 of them but it's really important to find that joy while you're building. All right, so now that we're talking about building new things, um, it makes me think of Jennifer Spivak, who is joining us today because a lot of people are building online programs and a lot of people are considering doing online marketing who've never done online marketing before. People who used to do marketing through networking or through doing live speaking or some people even handed out actual flyers, right? All that's on pause right now because of the pandemic. So Jennifer has seen a rise in her business. She does Facebook ads and is an expert in that. She's been doing it for 10 years. And so she's gonna come on and answer our questions. Feel free to put them in the chat if you have a specific question you'd like her to answer. I'm gonna kick us off with a few questions. And uh, Jennifer, we're so excited to bring you on. So without further ado, you know there's so much we wanna talk about with you. We're gonna bring on Jennifer. And maybe Jennifer, just send me a little like request to go live. That would be great and I will bring you in. Um, in the meanwhile, we have been using Facebook ads for the last four years here at Million Dollar Women, and that is a lot of how we find the women and help them find us who join our online programs. Um, and you know, it's not easy to get that right. There's a reason not everybody does Facebook, you know, paid Facebook ads, is that it's, it's you gotta tinker with it and you gotta work with the pro. Like that's a really precious opportunity to learn from someone who is a total expert in this, Hi, Caitlin, and get your questions answered. Hey, Jennifer, how are you? Hello, I'm great. How are you? I'm good. Nice to see you. Okay, there we go. There we go. Loving the Jaguar. We were matching last time. Remember, we both had the black and white. I woke up this morning and I thought maybe if I think hard enough, Julia will also be wearing animal print, and we will you know, be matching again. I do have an animal print blouse, and I'm tempted to go get it. <laughs> Uh, but that's all right. We'll stop the twinning. <laughs> twinning stops here. For now, yeah. <laughs> For now, exactly. But I, lo I love your glasses, actually. I don't think I've seen those. Thank you so much. They are new. 
They're great. I know now that we've been working together for a while, I have that funny feeling of like, I don't know those. Where did you get those? How do you have new eyewear? <laughs> and you know, funny enough or not, I bought them off of a Facebook ad. Oh, did you? Oh, I yeah, sure what a great lead-in. What a great <laughs> lead-in. Why don't you tell everyone what you do and what Team Spivak does, and then I'm going to jump in with some questions. Beautiful. So I own an all-female Facebook and Instagram advertising agency. Uh, we are an intentionally lean team of nine. We work primarily with other female entrepreneurs. And, you know, Facebook ads is really just the tool. A lot of the people on my team are super data nerds, and we love getting into that. But at the end of the day, it's about helping more women make more money. Awesome. Well, we share that vision, yes. right? That's what we're all about, too, helping more Absolutely. women make more money. And I remember when I saw you pop up in my LinkedIn. I know I'm not supposed to admit this, that I found you on LinkedIn. That's fine. But, you know, it happens. But you just, I loved your voice. I love how authentic you are. And, you know, yeah. I've seen so many other ads for Facebook people, but yours really spoke to me. And, and now that I'm working with you, I know that that is who you are. You just, yes. Yeah really into what you do, which is yes. one of the things I love about you. Yeah. So, hey, without further ado, I had friend, I had dinner last night with a friend, oh. and he's also a marketer. Nice. And I was like, what should I ask? How many people are making video courses, right? Like, because during the pandemic, a lot of people decided, okay, it's time for me to make the video version of my course, or my, yeah. sorry, the video version of what I sell. Yeah. So all these new people coming online, selling courses, having online offerings, what do you say to people who are worried that Facebook is just too saturated now with ads for the same yeah. thing, right? Like I'm a coach. So what if I ask that question? Like, can this still work for me? Because yeah. now there's so many coaches advertising these online courses. What do you, yeah. what do you say to that? At the end of the day, it goes back to like a standard marketing one-on-one -on -one conversation around differentiation and knowing your value proposition. Like any people love to treat Facebook ads as like this other but it's not, it's just another medium where all of the general rules still apply. So yeah, it is crowded, unquestionably. We work with a lot of business coaches and especially if you're targeting women entrepreneurs, if you are providing any sort of coaching or course or training in the business world, super crowded. It, it is, that is just that. But knowing your audience, knowing your messaging, knowing that front facing messaging that really kind of lands in terms of where your audience is currently can help you cut through that. So we don't have to make it like it's just the general rules apply and Facebook is just another way to get in front of the right people. Absolutely. And it's certainly not a panacea, right? The people who are coming to Facebook ads thinking, oh, this is going to solve my problem. I'll do Facebook ads. Help us understand why that doesn't work that way. Yeah, so anytime somebody comes in and I can hear on a sales call that they want Facebook ads to fix their business, I know that that's the quickest path to two sides being very unhappy. Um, <laughs> look, let's, like, let's be real. Again, this isn't even about Facebook ads. Nothing's a silver bullet. It doesn't work that way. We would have figured out how to all be billionaires by now if that were the case. So yeah. um, uh, having a really, really solid foundation is actually the best way to um, get yourself set up to be able to run Facebook ads. You and so what's a solid foundation? Define that for us. Primarily at the end of the day, we could point to specific things like you have a proven funnel, you know all of your numbers, but really what it comes down to for me is that what you do and how you sell it has been validated. That is the most important thing. You know, again, perfect world, a client, you know, can say, I've got a webinar funnel. It converts at X percent. Like that's my favorite, but that does, that does not always happen. Um, but if a client can come to me and say, okay, you know, we just signed a new client, right? She's, um, she's a coach, although she specifically certifies other people similar to the, you know, something new that you're working on, but again, different. Um, and, um, she hasn't done like huge launches. She doesn't have a tremendous funnel, but she said, look, I did a beta launch to my list. This is what works to get people in. These are the videos that when people watch, they responded and I enrolled 22 people at $5,000 each. Great. I can look to that to get a sense of what people want, what messaging they respond to and what works. Facebook ads should not be about recreating. Most companies don't have money to spend on just trying to see if someone's even interested in what they have. So when there's yes, it's an expensive testing ground, right? It, Facebook ads is not a good testing ground. Yeah. And, and again, it, I mean, there's elements of it that are a good testing ground, but that foundation of 
you know what your offer is, you know the value proposition, and you know that people actually want it and how they want to be indoctrinated into it, that's when you are ready to start looking at paying for traffic or potentially hiring an agent. That's really helpful. And you're talking about a coach, so that's a pretty obvious one. A lot of coaches advertise yes. on Facebook. But I'd be curious about other types of businesses. You also mentioned that she had a $5,000 price point, which is, yes. I think, considered a high ticket offer, right? Yes. So can you help us understand what types of businesses are good fits to try Facebook ads and which ones, like, maybe that's not the best place to be trying to market? You know, we've got clients who do really well with high ticket and we've got clients who sell, you know, e-commerce products in like the 40 to $60 range and they're also really profitable. So it can really go either way. Again, it, do people want, like, we keep going back to the same thing, right? Like, do people want what you have? Do you know, you know, what to put out there to get them to buy? And then at the end of the day, like the, the price point doesn't really matter as much. Um, we see success on both sides of the spectrum all the time. You know, we have some clients that crush it with like a $27 tiny offer and others where that just doesn't work and they only really make profit with high ticket. So it's, it's really a myth. So if sure. someone has a product company, we have a lot of women in our community who sell products. I'm thinking yeah. of essential oils. Um, I'm thinking of CBD. Uh, creams that somebody sells in our community with somebody making ice cream yeah. um, so what how should they think about it like is there a price point at which you say hey this is worth it like you mentioned 37 dollars that seems kind of low to me yeah. like if it's 200 dollars, help us help us understand how you figure that out yeah, so we normally say that anything between about $35 to $100 as an average order value is still in that slightly lower ticket impulse buy range, which works really nicely. We do have some clients that are like, you know, mid, like, like maybe, you know, 200, 300-ish. And again, those are product-based businesses. You have to do a little bit more work to sell that, but the higher average order value works out nicely. But absolutely, you know, if you're selling something that's 35 dollars even 30 we've had some clients that have done really well uh we were able to get really really good and a low enough cost per click that it all worked out so um, and there's some side benefits aren't there because do you get people to join your newsletter list or like what are some side benefits of running these facebook ads there's you know a million side benefits you're going to definitely grow your list you're going to grow your organic reach because facebook and instagram like when you pay you're going to um you know, just get more people aware of you. You're going to brand awareness, follow. right? Brand awareness. You're going to grow your following naturally. Um, you know, we've had scenarios where a client was like, hey, because of the ads, even though this wasn't the focus, someone saw me and I got this speaking gig or someone saw oh, me and I got this sponsorship. Um, but at the end of the day, our focus 100% is profitability. The other stuff is awesome, but having a clear focus on profitability is when you'll be in the best position to be able to do what Facebook ads is designed to do, which is spend, you know, X and make Y back on repeat and with consistency. Yeah. And that's one thing I love about you and your team. You're very numbers driven, which yes. is great. That's something we teach in our community yes. and you track everything on Google docs. We, and it's also very transparent. Yes. Uh, which is great. We have worked with Facebook ads agencies where they're like, oh, we've got this, right? And we had to kind of ask them to even look at what was happening. Yeah. Where you're, you know, we're getting on calls saying, wait, why did this happen? What should we tweak? Should we change the copy? Should we change the images? Yes. Which leads me to the question of timeline. So how long does it take if someone wanted to try this? Yeah. Um, I know that with, with Google ads, right, when you're doing Google ads, you spend 500 bucks, you see if it works, you stop it, you start it. Is it like that with Facebook or is it not? not so much? There's just fewer <laughs> variables with AdWords to be able to test. It's hard to give one blanket statement, but there's a very specific reason we have a three month minimum. Like it's not just like a random arbitrary number. It's because we have found that with the types of budgets that we're working with, with, with most of our clients, which is like several thousand dollars per month, you know, and usually around five grand or less per month, um, we need those solid three months to be able to test all the different variables, which includes different messaging, different copy, different leads, different creative videos, testimonial videos, different audiences, where we're sending traffic to, what the funnel looks like. Like there's so many different variables and it sounds like a lot and it is. 
and it can take a lot and it does require spending money sometimes on what doesn't work in order to find what does. But three months normally is enough time to at least get a sense of what's going to be possible and to be able to then decide um, with some level of certainty what going forward might look like. Yes, and I and with your team, you're able to really look at each piece of the funnel. And if something's not working, it's not like scrap this whole, you know, ad campaign. Maybe oh, that image people didn't react well to, or maybe this copy we need to tweak. So I love that kind of precision. You guys are like, you know, neurosurgeons, absolutely <laughs> going in there and figuring out what's wrong. That's why the um, data piece is just so important because at the end of the day, if we're not looking at data, we're just a bunch of people giving our opinion about something. And look, I've seen a lot of funnels. It's not not relevant when I share my opinion, but at the end of the day, I'd much rather be in a position of, hey, we did 30 full days of sending traffic to this funnel. We now have you know tens of thousands of people that have moved through it. Instead of making a best guess, the numbers support that we need to change this thing or that people can pop off here. And it takes the some of the guesswork out of it. It takes yeah. some of the what gets built up of like it's so complicated. Well, it's really not if you have all the tracking set up properly and you can see a clear picture and then be able to adjust from there. Yes, and sometimes as entrepreneurs, we get attached to uh, an, an idea we had or yes. set of images or a video, yes. and it's like the data doesn't lie, right? Yes. It's just, it's not working. You gotta change it. Exactly. Um, I am curious. What do you say to people who question whether Facebook is still the place to spend their ad dollars? We know that during the pandemic, you know, TikTok is way up, YouTube is way up, LinkedIn has lives now. Why should people still advertise on Facebook, in your opinion, or should they? I, the fact of the matter is, that nothing. There's no other platform in the history of social media since Facebook has existed that has captured this level of market share. I mean, still, it, and that's it, still the case. Yes, absolutely. Yes, you have, you know, huge growth on platforms like TikTok. I'm not saying ignore that, right? Like a cross-channel strategy is a great idea for me. But that's one subset of the market. There is no other platform like Facebook. And let's, you know, remind ourselves we're also talking about Instagram whenever we're talking about Facebook. Yes. Between those two, you capture like a very large percent of the entire market that exists. Like that's everybody. And the fact of the matter is they have the most advanced features in terms of how to target people, how you can retarget, how you can track things compared to something like LinkedIn. They're about a tenth as expensive as it is to advertise on LinkedIn. And then yeah, LinkedIn is still very expensive. And I haven't looked into YouTube advertising. Is that something yeah. you looked at just as a comparison? Absolutely. And look, it's it's rarely that we're ever saying do Facebook over this, right? Like everything can all go together. Yes. Um, but it is an incredibly strong platform because everybody there, it's relatively cost efficient. And, you know, look, this piece is a little bit anecdotal, but worth sharing because, again, I've been doing this for 10 years. Um, I have seen multiple waves. It's usually two to three times a year, literally every year for 10 years, where there's this big uprising of Facebook did something bad, we're all leaving, or... You know, the younger demographic doesn't like Facebook anymore, so it's not going to work. Or Facebook made this change to how the pixel works, so advertising's dead. I mean, we see this. I've heard all those, too, by the way. Right? Yeah, it's definitely and I've been yeah. through every wave of those every year. I used to get panicked about them. My dad, yeah. loves, my dad loves to send me the news articles and go, what are you going to do now? I'm like, Dad, I think it's okay. Um, but every wave of that, and at the end of the day, I have seen no negative impact to the results we've been able to get for our clients. Absolutely zero. That's so amazing. I just, I, I learned to ignore, you know, all of those things that happen. Zuckerberg is a smart, smart man. Trust that he is 10 steps ahead and making sure that this ad platform, which is like how the company exists, stays relevant no matter what's going on. Right, because they've certainly done a bunch of pivots and they will keep doing okay. pivots to stay relevant. Look well, and I imagine that like, the skills you have, even yeah. if, God forbid, Facebook went poof tomorrow, you could just go to some other platform and build a whole yes. funnel there. That's, yes. that's, that's, sure. that's, what I, that's what I tell dad to make. I was going to say, yeah, we'll, we'll let dad know that. Down if, down if dad's watching, she's going to be fine. <laughs> I don't know if dad knows how to use Instagram, but... Um, hey, I got my mom on Instagram during the pandemic. <laughs> I don't know if I'm watching lives yet. But I'll, I'll be like, in fact, we just had that conversation the other day where I was like, did you see I gave you a shout out on story? 
And she was like, no, I haven't checked it yet. I'll check it tomorrow. I was like, no, you can't check it tomorrow. <laughs> no, it's okay. <laughs> 24 hours. <laughs> so I clearly only did the half tutorial. <laughs> I love it. I love it. So what kinds of things do people ask you? And if people watching have questions, please feel free to put them in the chat. I mean, these are all questions I've heard people ask me, you know, so I'm excited to be able to ask you. I'm usually doing the second hand, you know, I think this is what Jennifer would say. Yeah. Um, but what do people typically ask you? Because people here may have the same questions. Uh, hands down every time it's something along the lines of what's the secret? Oh, <laughs> <laughs> when we all like to know. Right? I mean, like, that's it at the end the of the day. The secret's hiring you. <laughs> well, here's the thing, right? And look, transparency is such a huge part of my brand. And I am often very vocal about the fact that there isn't one. There is no secret. Like, any agency that's trying to tell you that there is, is, you know, using it as part of a marketing strategy, which may be smart. And look, at the end of the day, when you are starting to spend tens of thousands, hundreds of thousands of dollars per month, which some businesses do, there is definitely some super technical strategy that you need to have to make that work. But when you're not, which is the case for most of the entrepreneurs that we work with, it really just does come down to at the end of the day, setting up your tracking properly, reading data, testing different things side by side, and following that data. Like really, really all we're doing is structured testing but we just have lots of years of experience at looking at the data and maybe a little bit better at interpreting it and knowing where to go with that data and and i would also say and getting creative if things don't work the first time exactly. like contacting us and saying well what other lists do you have like let's build a look-alike list right and just constantly yes. tweaking and changing yes but it really really is Again, it's not Facebook is not the other, right? It's like any other marketing. And in fact, it's even better because you can set everything up and clearly see what's happening. The missing piece often for many entrepreneurs is that they are not setting up that tracking in the beginning. They are skipping over the foundational stuff because the pixel sounds confusing. And then that's where you're operating blind. That's when you have the experience of Facebook ads don't work because you're putting money into this black box and you have no idea how to even know if it's working, let alone having the ability to get it working. So, right, and, and that's the whole beauty of Facebook is that you can track everything. So if you're not yeah. using that, you're not using the power of the Facebook ads. Absolutely. Well, and, and I'm so glad that you're, you know, not doing the Pollyanna like, yes, this solves everything. I and mean, I knew you wouldn't. But however, let's get a, let's dream a little bit. Like, can you share maybe one success story you've had recently? Because the reason yeah. people are drawn to Facebook ads is most of the marketing we do doesn't have that possibility of kind of blowing up, right? So. Yeah. And it doesn't have to be someone made two million dollars, but yeah, you just tell us like one real story. Believe yes. me, that would be Let really helpful. I'm going to share two because I think that they're they're different, and we'll speak to different people depending on where they're at. Awesome. So one is my own, oh, my own cool. agency, Legion. <laughs> yes, we did. Yes, we did connect on LinkedIn, and I did you, you drank your own Kool Aid. <laughs> I did do a LinkedIn lead generation strategy, but we also definitely drink our own Kool Aid, and you know have to walk the walk, and we have a whole lead generation um, strategy that we implement through Facebook ads. So um, this year to date, just from this one Facebook ad funnel, which is really simply just driving people to book a call with me. And look, there's a lot of moving pieces that make it work, but it's plain and simple. We're driving people to book a call. We've spent about $9,000 on this funnel and this ad campaign. And I've closed about $224,000 in revenue wow. as a result of that, which is a 23 times return. Amazing. Pretty, That's so pretty cool. Awesome. Congratulations. Thank you. That's and great. you know, I'll say there's something different about having it, like seeing that money hit your bank account versus doing it for someone else. Like it was almost like, oh my God, this does really work. Like, I've been doing <laughs> it for so long that I almost- Well, and I'm sure so many people with. watching can relate to that because we have so many women in our community who are like, you know, consultants and help people like fix up their whole websites or whatever. And then their website looks terrible. Yes. <laughs> right. So you actually did it. And it yes. was, I was like, oh, my God, right? I know what I <laughs> what's one thing you got right? Can you share with us? Like, is there something you tweaked or like, what did you do that, that, that made it work? Do you think? Um, two things. So one, I am really, really clear on my messaging. 
Um, and again, that goes back And who you're not for, right? You're very clear yeah. on who you're not for. Like, what's yes. one line you say about who you're not for? I don't remember well, the by heart, but you will. You know, we, we are very clear that we're, like, all female, that, like, our vision is to, like, smash the patriarchy. You know, I have people commenting on my ad saying that I hate men, and I'm like, oh, no. No, I love men. It's just the patriarchy is deeply pro problematic. Um, but love yeah, that. Where I don't mind being a little bit polarizing, um, and it really allows me to speak to the exact right people. And what that ends up creating is people get on my sales calls, not weighing which ad manager ads team they're hiring. They've picked Jennifer already. It's kind of a done deal. And I love that. that makes the whole thing um, work really nicely. And we've had, you know, obviously really, really great re results for six months now and continue to. And, and I'd love to just press pause there a minute because it's such an important teaching in that. So I just want to tease it out. And then we want to hear your other story yes. too. Um, that, you know, when we're advertising, it's always tempting to sell to everyone, right? But when you sell to everyone, you're selling to no one. No one. Because look at what Jennifer does, Facebook ads. There are like thousands of people who do Facebook ads. I mean, yeah. any person in their basement can decide, hey, I'm a Facebook ads guru. Yes. So she was very smart and decided, I'm going to really look at what do I care about, right? Who do I like to work with? And then I'm going to speak to that person, even if I not only alienate other people, yes. they may even be mad at me, right? Yes. Yes. And so good for you. And I think there's a real lesson in that because that kind of niche marketing is something we teach in masterclass. We certainly do it at Million Dollar yeah. Women, right? We don't help women who launch. We don't help women who are getting from 1 million to 5 million, right? We only help women making this amount of money yes. and who are trying to scale. So yes. thank you for letting me tease that out a minute. Yeah, that specificity is really, really important, especially in a crowded space like business yes. coaching and courses like we were talking about before. Um, and actually, this is a nice tie into this next example. So this is a newish client. We've only been working together for about six weeks. Um, she is a coach for other health coaches. Um, and she specifically helps health coaches make their first $1,000 online. Talk about specific, right? Her yeah, wow. is brilliant. She knows her messaging, like a dream client because she came with all that amazing foundational stuff. Now, we're really early on. We've only spent about $1,200 on ads. So okay. there's not like there's not some six-figure results here. But in our first month of working together, we were able to promote this um, mastermind that she had in addition to some uh, lower ticket courses that she has that are a little bit closer to the 347 dollars mark. And on that $1,200 ad spend, we were able to generate a 10 times return and make about twelve thousand dollars in oh, month, in month one so again it's like it's not i love a, that and, and let me just call out for people who aren't familiar with facebook ads here's why this is so awesome well obviously 10 times return is always awesome yeah and jennifer herself had a 23 times return even more awesome but the beauty of it is that it's repeatable yes because right. having run a product business where we had venture capital backing and spent you know hundreds of thousands of dollars on marketing every year back in the day um a lot of the things that we hit on were not repeatable it was yeah. like a one-time thing where when you do facebook ads if you get it right yes it's repeatable and it can yes. grow yes am i correct absolutely and that's what we're looking to build here systems yes. right like the difference i think about my business a year ago before I had kind of cracked my own funnel. And every waking moment of my life was about where do I find more of the right leads? How do I get in front of more of the right people? Like it was just all consuming. Right now, and this is again what we seek to create for our clients, I never need to think about that ever. It's just running on autopilot, getting me calls booked in my calendar with the right people. It is a system that if I need, you know, more revenue this month, I just double my ad spend, like plain and simple. And that certainty, I mean, isn't that what every business Oh, my God. Wants? Yeah, that's the ability to sleep at yeah. night, right? That's what yes. I'm going that for. control, right? We all want control over our own yes. work. And that is really, really what we're looking to And create. some of us want to be sitting on the beach in Italy while that happens. <laughs> I'm helping a coaching client build her first online program. She never did anything online before the pandemic. Yeah. A very sought after leadership coach in the corporate world. And she's building her first course. She's the reason I started with the tip of build with joy because she was having a little frustration over like, I've only had one client sign up. But I can't wait for her to watch this because yeah. you know, a year from now when it's dialed in or even sooner, she could come to you and say, hey, here's what I charge. Here's what works. Help me turn this into something that I can blow up, right? The way yes. you just blew up your clientele by finding what works, cracking that code, exactly. and then put more into it. And then she can do it on the beach in Italy. 
<laughs> exactly. <laughs> I love that. Well, this is so helpful, Jennifer. I know that people are going to be eager to contact you. What's the best way to reach you? And then also, who should not contact you? Back to like, we're not for everyone. Right? Maybe some people aren't ready yet. I know they got such value from this. Yeah. So um, definitely, like, obviously, Facebook is my platform. So if you want to just connect, I'm over there. Uh, you can also go to my website, which is jenniferspivak.com. There's all the information in terms of who we work with, how to contact me. And what are you on Facebook? Are you like just Jennifer Spivak? Are you yeah. Spivak? Yeah, are you? just everything's under my name, Jennifer Spivak. Okay. Um, and yeah, I think who shouldn't contact me? And granted, look, if you want to connect on Facebook, all good. But if you want to smash the patriarchy, you can still yeah. contact Jennifer. You guys yes. About that. Yes. But in yes. terms of like really that question of, you know, who's not ready to work with us? Um, you know, you need to already be doing six figures, clearly. Um, you have to have some validation. Again, perfect world, proven funnel, but we know that it's not always a perfect world. Like, come to me with, this is my offer. This is how I sell it. X number of people have already purchased it, so I know people want it. And I can point to this message, this, you know, this Instagram live, that is what moves people forward. I can work with that and create strategy around that. I love that. That is super, super helpful. And I'm sure a lot of people are going to want to contact you. And congratulations on your success. What is next yeah. for you? What's next at, at Team Spivak? Um, you know, just, I, <laughs> I'm laughing because this is like so present right now. I'm learning how to be less of a control freak. Good um, for you. Something a lot of women are working on in this community so we can relate. <laughs> really, really challenging. Um, but I'm doing it. You know, I, I have a team now of nine and I am learning how to use them because they're brilliant. And um, yeah, really just learning how to like lean on my team as we continue to grow. This is very much well past on track to be our, our first seven figure year. Um, and, you know, I really just I want to stay intentionally lean because one on one time with my clients like you were talking about is so important. I never want to lose that. So I don't know that we're going to try and get much bigger than we are right now. I'm now at the point where, you know, going back to that joy conversation, right? Like I built this thing. We do amazing work for our clients. Let me let my team handle some stuff. So yeah. I, like, are you going to join me like, in the recovering perfectionist? world <laughs> i really hope so <laughs> here let's do the fist bump recovering perfectionist you're gonna be yeah. one, okay <laughs> because i'm still just recovering i think probably like aa i'll be recovering for life yeah that's maddie my chief of staff right yep <laughs> but, but recovering is better than still perfectionist which is yes. really what the not letting go is all about right we yes. know it. we know oh, it but it's 100%. so hard still Absolutely. So, I, yes, I salute you for doing that important work, and I know you'll get there. And uh, Thank you. I'm excited to watch you grow, and hopefully to have you on a panel at some point at the Million Dollar Women Summit talking about what you've learned. We would love that. Not to put you on the spot in front of everybody. Uh, you have I'll show up anywhere and talk. I'm a yes to anything. You awesome. All right. Noted. Noted. And then I'll wear my animal print shirt so we can. Yes. We're def <laughs> def let, me, let me rephrase. I will only do it if we're matching. We're not matching. Jennifer, this was awesome. Thank you so much for taking the time. Sure. Have a wonderful day. And if yeah. you want to find Jennifer, go on Facebook, check her out, get on a call with her, or even better, get her team, her amazing yeah. team, <laughs> and see what Facebook ads can do for you. Thank you. Have an awesome day. Thanks, Bye, Julia. Jennifer. Bye. See you soon. I've learned so much from Jennifer about Facebook ads. I've been running them for four years, as I mentioned earlier, and we've worked with, I don't know, six different agencies and it's only now that we feel like we have that true partner who gets us and that's what i wish for you whatever marketing you do for your business i know in the beginning it's just you you and an intern maybe you and one part-time marketing person but as you find what works that will generate the new dollars to continue to in invest in marketing and you know peter drucker the famous management consultant said that really business is just two things innovation and marketing. So if you want a little more help with the marketing side and to explore if Facebook ads might be right for you, check out Jennifer. And we'll have other marketing folks on here to help you with other parts of marketing. We've heard from Joe Apfelbaum about LinkedIn. We've heard from Sonia about branding. And if there's something special you want to learn about, then please just write in to us and we can bring someone on to answer those questions. Maddie, M-A-D-D-Y, at juliapim.com. Thanks for joining me. I will see you back here on Monday for CEO check-in. Have an amazing few days in between. And remember to build with joy. Bye.